Hi everyone, I'm back with another film review and after the seriousness of Roma, complete change of pace and I'm going to talk today about Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and although I love animation and superhero films like everyone, this isn't a film which necessarily would have been on my radar but the reviews have just been fantastic so I wanted to check it out which is pretty easy when you've got a 13 year old who you can use as camouflage to go and see uh, all these other kids films. And it's not really a kids film because what you soon realize is that someone is really thinking deeply about how the mythology of superheroes works, uh, let alone the animation. So we're going to do our usual thing. Should you see this film? Um, does it have a stinger? Uh, then we'll to have a little bit of a chat about the film itself and then spoilers. So, the first thing is, should you see this film? You should see this film. You should run to a cinema and see it. I cannot tell you how amazing this film is. And everyone can go see it. I love it when I can recommend a film and go, take the whole family. You could take anyone from, I don't know, five-year-old, anyone who's into Spider-Man or superheroes, will get the action and the colors all the way up to you could have uh, grandparents there who, you know, have read Spider-Man from the 60s. So uh, this is a film for everyone and it'll operate on different levels. Now I saw it in 2D, there is a 3D version and everyone has said the 3D version is really good. Normally I don't go to 3D anymore because if you've ever worn the 3D glasses, it makes the film very dark. And I feel that that can, you know, damage the experience. But this one probably would be okay. Uh, yeah, don't wait for it. Go see it. This is fantastic. Uh, I'll also tell you, because um, I was the only one, me and the kids, I kept them there. Um, we we're the only ones there to wait for the stinger. There is one post credit scene because it's, you know, it's a Sony film, not a Marvel film. Uh, per se from Disney and so people mightn't have been a bit confused but they put in a great little stinger which is really funny and that's uh, actually worth waiting for and for the real Spider-Man geeks I've done a bit of research and I'll talk about it in spoilers. Okay I'll be back in a second we'll talk about this great film. So Spider-Man where did this idea come from? So I'm going to just give you about 20 second history of that. If you've been watching Marvel superhero films, you know that they're now owned by Disney and they've got the rights to all the Marvel characters. But even then you probably worked out there's a couple of crinkles like the X-Men don't seem to be there. And the weird thing is that uh, Spider-Man has only recently been lent from Sony uh, to Disney to be in the big Marvel films. But Sony still owns all the rights to, I guess, what we call the Spider-Man universe, including animated films like, such as this. Um, so that's why this has kind of come out a bit out of the left field, that they've gone, what can we do uh, which is completely different? We, don't want, we can't compete with the Avengers and all that kind of stuff, but what can we do which is different and we can own it? So... Very smart people, Amy Pascal, who got in trouble with the Sony emails, she's gone now, but her fingerprints are all over this. And she brought in Lord and Miller. And if you know that name, they're the guys who 21 Jump Street and the Lego movie, just really smart young guys who seem to get uh, how they can take something which is existing and, and just amp it up to 11. And they're the guys behind this, they're the producers with a whole host of other people and then but Chris Lord is down as both the uh, guy who came up with the story co-wrote the screenplay but they didn't direct it they brought in three guys who each had different skill sets and they're not names that you regularly know and I'll just tell you what they are because they should be honored for their work and Bob Peraschetti, Peter Ramsey and Rodney Rothman there weren't names that I knew, but I just heard an interview with them not long ago on a podcast and they seem like they really know their stuff and they all know their strengths and weaknesses. So, uh, this film is insane. It starts with just 
the story just in a oh, very quick because the story is so insane very quickly but you've probably heard if you've you know been watching superhero films and that that although there's peter parker the spider-man in the comics there's a million spider people and one of them uh who they kind of thought would be the next spider-man is a uh, character miles morales and he's uh like a I think he's a Spanish mother, kind of black father, who's growing up in Brooklyn, uh, like Peter Parker, but of this generation. And he's dealing with a whole host of other, but teenage issues. And he uh, soon realizes that uh, after being bitten uh, by a spider, that he's got spider powers. But more importantly, because of this kind of weird plot, other spiders are coming from parallel universes. Uh, different Peter Parkers, spider women, eh, you know, all over the thing. Now, I had to write down the name because there are just so many people. So you get, there's Peter Parker, who we know is Spider-Man, but there's Peter B. Parker, who steals the film. He's voiced by Jake Johnson. And he's an older, kind of slightly run-down Spider-Man. Then you've got Hayley Steinfeld as Spider-Woman, Gwen Stacy. Um, this weird, I didn't like it so much, but Peter Porker, if you've ever seen, it's like out of, um, a Warner Brothers cartoon and he's like a little spider pig and the kids like, they like, they, it, funnily enough, even though I didn't like him, they're talking about a spinoff just of that character. Uh, cause he's a journalist and yet he's so stupid. I don't know. Uh, then you've got an anime, Penny Parker and Spider which is kind of like her robot, but has a spider brain or something. And then finally my favorite, <laughs> Spider-Man Noir, and he's voiced <laughs> earnestly by Nicolas Cage, who is obviously insane by this point. And he just delivers his lines as if he's in a real film and it works so perfectly. And finally you've got Kingpin and uh, he's voiced <laughs> even better and, and you know all the voices uh Liv Schreiber who you know, I'm a big Ray Donovan fan um so uh, I should say Miles Morales is Shamik Moore who uh, was in the get down uh by Baz Luhrmann and I never saw it but I knew the voice there's a, a, another million people there's just too many so why are people talking about this film apart from the talent in the voices the talent behind the camera. What this film does, which I didn't think I could really, you always think, geez, what can I see now? Because I've seen everything, and especially in 2D uh, cartoon animation, because really once Pixar came on board, a lot of people dropped that. Now it's all cartoon, it's all computer animation now, but you know, there's real things um, which have gone in, front of uh, 2D animation and really it's all Pixar now owns everything and Incredibles 2 up until this film came out was you know the probably the lock for best animated film. What they've done is they've taken 2D used computers to change the art form. Now I know that sounds like a little bit over the top but and this is the hard part. If you haven't seen the film, you go, oh yeah, whatever. When you see it, you go, yeah. This is post, postmodern. It is absolutely fantastic. On purpose, they use different animation, which gives you the idea like you're reading a comic book, that a comic book page is turning. Sometimes it flirts out of, if you've, I don't know, nowadays, probably with digital printing, it doesn't happen. But in the old days, if you bought a comic book, you would sometimes get a thing called off register where the colors had moved out of the bubble they were supposed to be in. And it sometimes made the page kind of like effervescent. They have put that in on purpose. They've also done something weird, which is they've slowed down the frames a little bit. So sometimes it looks like a frame's missing, which is kind of like when you're reading a comic book. These are smart guys. They're really playing with an art form married with a great story which is also trying to do things. I mean, 
Yeah, this is, there's a reason why everyone is raving about this film, and it should be uh, probably, a, you know, best animated film of the year. And people are now starting to say, like, it's breaking the bubble because people are starting now to say, it's not only, like, the best animated film of the year, it might be the best animated they've seen. I saw Fantasia when I was about five years old in the theatre, so you got to be a bit careful saying best ever of anything. But people are now ranking it like when they talk about the best superhero films, like so Dark Knight, Spider-Man 2, The Avengers. They're putting this in the top five. And I agree. This is amazing. Uh, I'm going to come back and although there aren't spoilers, it'll give me a chance just to collect my thoughts. And that way, if I do drop any uh, any spoilers, we're all forewarned. Okay, I'll be back in a second. So as I said, this isn't really spoilers, but I'll talk about spoilers uh, towards the end of it. It's more just I just need to take a break and have a bit of a thing. So the other thing I wanted to talk about is in this story, if you start thinking about a Spider-Verse, um, it is a spoiler, I guess, that there's a Stan Lee cameo and it is by far the best. I'm not one of these people who... You know, the cameos are nice, but I don't really care that much. This one, post his death, uh, and the way it's written, and probably because it's animated, they can give him a bit more life, um, and he, they've, he's a little bit younger, I guess. Uh, but he talks to Miles Morales about how uh, a, he's uh, running a costume shop, and he gives him an old Spider-Man costume. And he's going, oh, it's not going to fit. And Stanley says, eventually it'll fit you. You'll grow into it. And that's a really beautiful idea because what it's doing is it's democratizing the idea of Spider-Man. Anybody can be Spider-Man. Now, I know that seems stupid because obviously you need the spider skills. But if you think of parallel universes, everyone has that origin story of they're bitten by the spider or in whatever way they gain the powers. But that it doesn't have to just be some white guy, Peter Parker. It could be, and as in the Spider-Verse, there's all these different people and all different genders and creatures and everything. And that's a great idea. Uh, it would be interesting to see because if you were one of these uh, people who didn't like The Last Jedi because said everyone can eventually become a Jedi if they've got a little bit of that, the Force in them, this is the same idea, but I bet they won't smash this, you know. Um, people don't always think stuff through. They just like what they like and hate what they hate. Um, this is a really good film. Uh, the other spoiler is... Um, very early in the film, Peter Parker, Spider-Man dies. Now, if you've watched closely the opening of the film, that is Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. He even does the dance from Spider-Man 2. And uh, so it's very interesting that they've, that's now become canonical. They do the kiss, they do everything. So I really liked that. Uh, and he's voiced by Chris Pine, which you could easily miss because it's not even very long. And then they have all the other guys come on board later. Uh, so they're really uh, starting to spread their wings about what kind of storytelling you can do with this medium. And it's absolutely fantastic. And the final thing I'll just end off is with the post credit stinger. That's um, Spider-Man. Uh, he's a guy from Spider-Man 2099 who's worked out there's this kind of time crisis and he's come back and they do this little thing and it's really kind of fun. But what it's showing is Sony are already, they're thinking ahead. This is this will have a sequel for sure, just on prestige value alone. Uh, look, it, this film, I have more notes on this film than I normally have. Normally I can almost do it off the top of my head, but this one I really had to check out. It's great, it's just go see it. I can't even, Sometimes it can really, like Roma, I can go through some scenes and this is, you just have to experience it. It's like real art. This is art. Um, that's it for today. If you like what I'm doing, press like, subscribe, then you always get whatever I'm doing. Um, if you can, spread the word. I love comments. 
Even if you disagree, we can have a debate. I love that. And I'm on Twitter, Guru Eden. And I'll see you soon. Bye.